exempted. But the life of going to heaven starts from here. Your life here will determine how you get to heaven. And even if you go there, that's another thing. <laughs> Amen. So bow down your heads and let's have a short prayer. Father, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, we thank you Amen. that you have gathered us one more time before your presence as your children. This when you are going to teach us, we pray the Lord, take hold of our hearts. Cause our hearts to be receptive of, unto whatever word that you're going to speak unto us. Cause this word to bring a change and a transformation in our lives. Myself standing here before your children, God, I pray, push me aside, you from heaven, speak to them. Use me just as a vessel to bring this message to them. Take hold of me, my thoughts and my spirit. I said, do every one of them under your care, because I am nothing without you. Thank you, Father, for your strength. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. 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 And I see some pens in the air. Pen. Thank you. Only Nana has a pen. If you do this, I can't see your pen. The way you are doing the uh -huh. One, two, three, four. Hey. It's a pen. It's like you are having a baby. Hey. Are you sure? You are pregnant. Hey. Who is this lucky guy? Hey. You are pregnant. Who is this lucky guy? Amen. You are pregnant. The title of today's message is Maximizing Your Potentials. Say it after me. Maximizing your one more time. Maximizing your potential. The last time. Maximizing your potential. Amen. What is maximize? To maximize something, what does it mean? Maximize. To reduce or to reduce. Not to reduce. Take the first word. Maximize. Increase. Maximum is to increase. Yeah. Yeah. So if you maximize something, what do you do? You enlarge, you add more to it. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. We are youth. We have potentials within us. But because we don't maximize them, it becomes useless. And it's not good. And in light of this leadership that you're about to select, uh, it's partially part of it. But most especially, what you're going to become in the future. That's what interests me much more. Because you don't want to do the work that your parents are doing now, would you? No, no. The school market and the fabric work and that sort of thing. Eh? I'm not saying they are not work, but you don't need to do that. Yes, you don't. Uh -uh. don't there are bank managers here. Amen. Judges and lawyers among you here. Amen. Because you are schooling here. You get me now? Go back home, we couldn't get education that you are having now. If you could get education that you are having now in Ghana, who will become here? None of us will be here. So if you have the chance, then you need to maximize your potentials. Amen. Amen. Now, potential, what is it actually? Something in you. Something in you. Thank you. Something in you. What thing is that? That the untapped resources, what you can do, your talents, your gifts, your God-given abilities that he has given to you that you have not tapped into them yet, we call them potentials. We're going to take a short scripture reading from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through to 7. And I want to see some Bibles in the air. Bibles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank. Is that the Bible? Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Nana, where is yours? Yeah, it's there. Shaki, yours? Thank you. Dry James? On the phone. I beg, I beg your pardon? Very soon, you're going to be an elder. So if you stand here for people to tell, tell people to bring down their Bibles they don't bring, how do you feel? Uh -huh. I see Bright James and Bright Enoch and Bright James also have their Bibles. Mama Isi, your Bible, please. Put your phone in your bag because you are chatting. Sister Gifty, are you here? Your Bible, please. Next week, by the grace of God, I don't want to see this Bible again in your hand. This is what I want. This is what you want. The thing is always kaput. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Emmanuel, I say, why is your Bible? It's a free Bible, I suppose. It's English. 
Oh, but we are English assemblies. It's not Uh huh. Okay. Uh, I want you to sign up and read second case chapter four for me, Sister Emanuela. What kind of No, we don't speak three here. We speak English, Netherlands, and French. We are international. Uh huh. Okay. You have it on the screen. I bet it's easier, eh? Okay, you stand up and read the first one for us. Yes, you. I'll hear you, don't worry. Stand up and read. It's a gift, please read the first one for us. It's on the screen. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. And Shaki, you will take the verse 2, so be ready. We have English on the screen. Here is English assembly, please, with all respect. Bring English Bibles. We don't read P here. Please. One of the wives of Thank the you. sons of the prophet cried out of Elisha, saying, Your servant, may, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant fed the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Shadrach, please, verse 2. Shadrach, stand up. It's on the screen. Here. Shadrach? On the screen. You have your Bible. And Elisha said unto her, Elisha. Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you? What have you? Uh, Take it one by one. What, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? Uh -huh. And she said, Your handmaid has not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I missed a word that I want to use today. That's why I wanted you to read from the screen. You said, have nothing except, right? Yeah. Which Bible verse are you using, please? Uh, King James. Uh, King, James. King, James. King James. King James, okay. Uh, Mama please, can you repeat what Shaki read on the screen for me? So, Elisha said to mm -hmm. her, what shall I do for you? Mm -hmm. Tell me. What do you have in the house? Mm -hmm. And he said, she said and, and she said, said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house, just a jug of oil. I missed this word. But, but, but a jar of oil. I said but it. No. Did she say it? No. no. No, that's why I called her attention to it. We need that word. Uh -huh. So very soon, you know why I'm stressing certain things up. Very soon, yeah? Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 3, who read it for us? Christian, verse 3, please, read the screen for us. Yes, it's right here. Please stand up and read for us. Then he said, go, borrow vessel from every, uh, everywhere, from all your neighbors. Hold on. You, read, you do read in school, right? Read again. Uh, then he said, go. Thank you. You know why? Then he said, go. There's commas there. All of them are speaking. Yeah. Me, when I'm reading Bible study, you go to my house, I'll spread two many books there. Take one by one. Everywhere be the thing. So, uh -huh, continue for me. Start afresh. So he said, then he said, uh -huh. go. Uh -huh. Borrow vessel from everywhere. Good. From all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. Uh -huh. And when you have came, have come, came, come, have come, come, in, come, have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and your sons. And your sons. And your sons. Then then pour into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. Amen. Amen. You again, please. Verse 5. So she went from him mm -hmm. and shut the door mm -hmm. behind her and her sons, mm -hmm. who brought the vessels to her, mm -hmm. and she poured it out. And she poured it oh. out. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Connie, please. May I have you on? I'm helping you. Let's no, do it. No, it came to pass yeah. when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. So the oil ceased. Baby, the last one. And then we 
you also. <laughs> then she came and told the man of God, and he said, mm -hmm. Go, sell the oil and pay your debts. Mm -hmm. You and you and your sons live on the rest. Amen. Amen. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, my God. sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons live on the rest. Amen. Amen. The passage we just read contained two questions. But before I go there, this woman, the husband is dead. He had only two sons. In the house where they were living, there were no TV, no mobile phone, no tablets. What was the only thing that the woman had? A jar of oil. Good. We are coming to take them one by one. At least you have something. There are two questions that were asked in this um, test we read. The first question was, when the woman approached Elisha and told Elisha her problem, my husband is dead, and the debtors are coming for their money. I don't have money. I have only two sons, and if they are going to take my sons away. The first question Elisha asked was, what shall I do for you? The second question was, what do you have in your house? If you were the woman, which one of these two questions will you answer? Mama Gifty, if you were the woman, and Elisha asks you these two questions, which one of them will you answer? You stand up and you tell me, the one or the two. Please, you can stand up. Just stand up. You say you can see better. Uh -huh. And tell me, question one or question two? What do you have in the house? That's what you answer. Amen. Let's go for her. But I say, comfort to answer the first one. I mean, yeah. because you have a problem. Mm -hmm. You came to me, this is your problem. And I asked, what shall I do for you? Quickly, you give me the answer. Mm -hmm. I want you to give me money. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell them not to come and take my sons. I want you to solve the problem. That is what we normally do. Is that not it? Yeah. Good. Now, watch this. Hmm. These are the two questions that were asked. What shall I do for you? And what do you have in the house? But, which question would you answer? The question you choose to respond to will determine the quality of answers you receive. Sister Kitty said the second one. What do you have in the house? That's what she chose to, uh, uh, to answer. Now, normally we choose to answer the easiest question who demands others to do something for us. Is that not it? Mm -hmm. Pastor, you want to say, what do you want me to do? Pastor, pray for me. You demand him to do something for you. But is that always the correct way to do? No. Let's watch this woman. The first person was pointing to Elisha's responsibility as a man of God. The second question was what the woman had in possession. All of us, we have something in us. We have something in our houses. Even if we take our bag, we have things in them. So the point is, what would your answer be? Now that I have broken it into pieces, what would your answer be? We all shift our answers from the first one to the second one, Abby. That's correct. The woman did not rail or rely on what Elisha would do for her, but what she could do to better herself. The so every time you need to rely on people who are going to do things for you, you must rely on what you have. Christian has a jumping ability. He can jump very high and shoot a basketball. Whereas, Eric, he is not tall like Christian, but his feet are very swift. He can also dribble the ball. That's what he has. Mm -hmm. So Eric does not depend on me to uh, play table tennis. No. He can use his swift feet to dribble the ball and score the goal. Whereas Chris does not depend on me to do long tennis. Why? Well, that's a long list to jump. So that means that you have to remember what you always have. Yes. So the woman said, I have nothing, but there was a very big but in her statement. Mm -hmm. 
We always rely on what we don't have and we miss what we have. She remembered what she has, what is already available, and it was precious to her. If you owe 10,000 euro, people are coming to take everything you have, including your children. What has uh, Amaka Trabaho got to do with the bills you have to pay? For example, you owe 10,000 euro. They are coming for you tomorrow. And all you have is this. What is this compared to the 10,000 you owe? It's nothing. It's minute. It's minute. It's just a minute fraction of it. But why did she say, but I have just a bottle of oil? Mm. Because she realized that's what oh. she had. And it is precious to her. To you and me, it is nothing, yeah. but to her, it's everything. So she exclaimed with a big but. Mm. You can, you must have nothing, but. Sister Comfort, you must have nothing, but. Sister Peppy, you are tired, but. It's a high time Christians this day must learn how to use a but in our answers. I might have filled the final exams this year, but I'll go for it. I'll take extra courses. People call me Shaki Shaki at school. But I'm not Shaki. I'm Pastor Chami. <laughs> so anytime you use a but in your and in your statement, you bring a negation to what you have said earlier. For example, oh elder, you have dressed tiptoe, but your shoe color doesn't match your suit. The moment you say but as hey, yes, something is coming to negate the positive you have already said. You get it? For example, I just explained the five C's with the leader, right? Let me take Eric again as an example. Eric's character is no. But when it comes to communication, he is the but has negate the character issue. That's how it is. So anytime you are speaking, what out for your but? It always negates the one I've already said. Are you learning something? Yes. Good. Now, you have nothing, but you have something. So everybody will look into himself and see that what do I have? When we say praise and worship, comfort will be looking at Sister Pep. Sister Pep will be looking at her. I said, the two of them, they know what they have. Mm -hmm. You see? But the leading. I have the voice, but I don't have the leading. So then you back me up, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you, the two of them will could move together and the song will be nice. Good. What would you do if you were Elisha? You by all means, you would dispense your answer by praying. We men of God always uh, need to let me pray for you. Get it, baby, Nay. It's not always a solution. It's not always a solution. She could have also said, since you have debt that you need to pay, you need money. Hey, let me rush and give you money. Right, Enoch, are you here? Okay. Let me rush and give you money. No. We don't rush in solving people's problem. Figure out what that person has. And try to use that person's potential to help him out. Oh I always tell my students, I'm not always going to give you fish, fish, fish. No, I will teach you how to fish. Amen. Some of them say, I'm going to take extra lessons so that I can drive everywhere. I say, no, what I'm teaching you now here, I'm teaching you everything so that you can drive everywhere. So first, you need to find out what your potentials are. Through that, someone else can use your own potentials to help you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, there are three ways that God turns things around. Three ways. Before God, you pray to God and God answers your prayers, He does three things. Take it now, it will help you in your school, in your work, and also in your Christian life. The first one is He releases His creative word. Genesis, as you used to pray this morning. And God said, let there be light, and there was. God always moved his word to you as a Christian. So I always recommend, buy Bibles. Read them. Good. The second thing he does is, 
your own input, what you have, when he was making you, he put some wires in you, he put certain things in you that he did not put in me. All of us, we are unique. Look at your faces. Turn and look at your brother's face. Look at his face. Do you look alive? No. <laughs> See, we all have different faces, different sizes. So are the things in us. When God was wiring me, the potential he put in me is different from Arnold's. Arnold might be bigger than me or even faster than me, but what I can do, he can't. And what he can do, I dare not. You understand? So we put that one as point two. Point three is what other people have. Remember the story we read? Elisha told him, uh, go and borrow vessels. You have only one oil. Good. But go out there, borrow empty vessels. He said, when you are borrowing, don't borrow just a few. Borrow plenty. Mm. Mm. Much more. It means you need other people's input mm. to make sure that your potentials are maximized. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's box on. The creative word of God. How does it come about? This is the divine word of God or God's direction or word of wisdom. Question. When the woman told uh, Elisha, I have just but a jar of oil. What creative word did Elisha give to the woman? Mm -hmm. What does he say to the woman? We just read it. He said, I have nothing but a jar of oil. Elisha says something to the woman. What did he say? Yes. Go and borrow vessels. It was a divine direction, a directive. Now, an essential part of your solution, that is a complete help. God's word always come to help you, but you need to follow it. That word can come through a prophecy, or through reading of the scriptures, or through somebody telling you. Okay? Those are God's um, creative words. It may be a prophecy, a teaching, as I'm doing, or a Bible verse, or a divine declaration. Then you take hold of that word. You're going to act on it because that's the first element we need. Good. Those things, it carries God's power. It imparts faith in you and you can do it. The I can do spirit. People have tried and failed, but you say, but me, I can do it. Mm. Your team lost the first match, but this time we can do it. Nigeria. Nigeria, they won? They lost to the lost team. Okay, Yama for the Bagana, no, you didn't go. <laughs> it constructs your destiny, build a new future in you. So when I say, Shaki, I've learned that you are struggling in history, but I have something for you. Come and study economics at this school. It will help you. I have given Shaki my word and direction. Simple elder. No, I didn't want to do that, but because you have said it, I will try. He will act upon the word I have said. Yeah. Over two years, he finished his economic studies. They employ him at the uh, commune, doing economy for turnout. He will see me, oh, Edda, is that you? He will be smiling. Why? He followed a certain directive word. Amen. That has shaped his future. And again, these are the gods. Uh -huh. Here, accept and act. So whenever you hear God's word, don't just sit down. Act on it. Today we are going to maximize our potentials. But you can't maximize on it when you sit on it. You must also explore. Amen. Amen. The second part is your oil. The woman said, I have nothing but a jar of oil. So you have nothing but your voice. You have nothing but your learning skills. You have nothing but your drawing uh, talents. You have, somebody can draw someone as if a picture was taken with a camera. Yeah. It's also an oil. Somebody can sit down and begin to write. The moment he finishes, it's like he's written a poem. 
Most of us, yeah, we are book writers, we are authors. Yes. But we don't want to bring those things that they are your pot of oil. No matter how small it seems, it is not insignificant. God gave you for a purpose. You can even write Sunday school children's book for them to read to them as Sunday schools. The woman this one is accepted in our local, it goes to the district, it goes to the nation. By the time you write, you realize the Ghana will call and say, come and write for the whole world. And those things are in you. They are your pot of oil. Amen. Amen. Are you going somewhere? Yes. So all of us, we have a potential in us. So your oil, it makes you unique. That's what you are going to fuel your life with. I know Petra can sing. When she develops her singing skills or talent, she can get her own album coming out. Kaku Show, they're going to go and launch the, the CD. Before you realize, volume two will be following, volume three, they will be calling her from places to places. Then she's maximizing her potential, <laughs> but you need to find it. Those things make you unique. Little things like ideas, abilities, they solve problems. If you want to be the richest person on earth, don't go look for money. No, go and look for problems. Yes, you solve the problem. And then you solve the problem, you get the money. That's how it is. But we, we want the cheap side of it. Then what is the essence? What is the importance of the ability that God gave you? He gave it to you to go and solve problems. That's how it is. There are two friends who went to India some years back. They were university uh, students. They saw the Indians, most of them are walking barefooted. They said, Jack, look at them, they are walking barefooted. Uh, it's not part of our problem. Let's go and find where we came. The other guy dropped out of school. He went to learn how to design very cheap sandals. And it was booming. It was booming. He bring it to India and sell. And later on, the one who went further to school after four years, after graduation, the one who dropped out of school said, Jack, come and work for me. Mm -hmm. Come. He had to employ mm -hmm. the one who went to the top of the Yes. Yeah. Why? He yeah. found a problem that the people were not able to afford common sandals. Mm -hmm. So he used his God-given ability here, designed cheap sandals, mm -hmm. one euro, mm -hmm. times 30 million. Mm -hmm. Imagine one euro is too cheap. Ah, one euro. But times more. 30 million. It's much more. Much more. So the guy had to complete his uh, university studies. His friend employed him yeah. to work for him. That's how it is. He is solving the problem of the Indians who are working barefooted. Look at Mark Zuckerberg, the guy who created Facebook. He told that people need to be connected all over the world. And now billions are following him. Look at the guy who uh, invented uh, this, our iPhone, Steve Jobs. Where is he? He's dead. But he thought, I have to compress the computer small so that it can fit into people's pocket. Now when you take your iPhone, what can you do with it? Almost everything. The things you do in the house on your PC is now in your pocket. He climbed, he climbed it, mm -hmm. that's it. Eh? He made it small. He used his God given potential and then the guy is damn rich. But we, you always, we always want to go to where the problem has already been solved. <laughs> for for that's what we want. So the woman said, Elisha, I have nothing. But a jar of oil. She would have chosen to answer the first question. What do you want me to do for them? I said, oh, I have this. Sister, what you have, you can change the world with it. Okay. So you need to maximize it. Amen. amen. Oh, amen. 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 Good. Now, whatever that you have in you, it sets you apart from others. It makes you unique. Like I said, what I can do is different from what you can do. Uh -huh. So whatever that you have been called upon to do something, always make sure that you do it in such a way that nobody does it the way you do your things. Amen. Amen. Good. Now, the part of Jah, she said, I have nothing but a jar of oil. The container is very important. You could have said, I have a plate of jar or a bucket of oil or a, a bowl of oil. He said, I have a jar of oil. What does this mean? This bowl or this container, it means that the system, 
through which you do things. You know, almost nine out of ten times, no matter I stand here to teach, I have the projector, I have everything. I want you to follow everything one by one. That is my system. That's my way of doing things. And that will come and stand here, his Bible is here, he will speak it out to you. That is his way of doing it. So the container is the method, the system through which you do your things. Amen. Amen. Good. If you don't treat your jar well, you will lose your oil. Mm -hmm. If you don't uh, treat the container well, you will use you will lose the oil inside it. So when now I drop this one three times, what will happen to the plastic container? It will burst. Yeah. When it burst, what will happen to my water? I will lose it. So if you don't treat your container well, you're going to lose your content. Your jar can limit your oil unless you maximize it. This one, the only thing you can contain is 50, uh, 50 uh, CL. So if I want this one to be more, I need a bigger bottle. So if you confine your talents, your given abilities in small area, you will be there forever. Mm. You need to expand it. Amen. 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 When I take myself, for example, if I let the things I can do, sometimes it blows my mind. You too, maybe you can do much more. So explore, explore, and then do better. Amen. Amen. Now, people can limit your oil because of the container. Mm. Now, you have a, a, a singing ability, a comfort. People can limit it according to how you expose it. You sing one to ah, let the demon and pay you. Ah, the demon and pay you. No. Oh, what did not go well? Yeah, the backing. Oh, the backing. You're going to do it better next week. Please, what again? You are going to ask questions as to how to better up what you didn't do well. But if they say a demon and pay you, then you become angry. Can you maximize your potential? No, you can't. Again, where you put your oil is as crucial to what you do with it. How you spend your time like Christian, you are a good uh, basketballer, you can jump high. But you are not in turnout uh, uh, basketball for anything. The only place that turnout for anything can go is up to hook strata. They can't go further. <laughs> you are limiting your potentials in turnout basketball. Yeah. Step out and go to Maclean Basketball Association. Mm -hmm. Then they link to get to Brussels. Before you realize, you have expounded. So the container of your oil can also limit what the oil can do. Amen. So th those who came here to play the drums, they leave the drums here, they go to other church, they come only driving moving to these two churches. When they can sit down and master well, they can be everywhere. Intercontinental drummers. It's part of it. <laughs> Amen. If your container is limited, your oil cannot flow. The package is limiting you. We are not just small local church of 20 or 30 people. We can do better. One day, we like this, uh, uh, what we did last year, the barbecue thing. We rent the place. We put microphones and speakers there. We sing live. Yeah. It's going to attract those people to come and listen to our songs. Hey, where are you people? We are there at Victoria Center number 45. By the time we realize the church is full, but because we are limiting our sourcing into only here, how many people are coming in now? Not even a single soul. So your container can limit your oil. We can do much better than that. If I catch you again, come and pray with me. Good. Now, let's look on. The next one is other people's vessels. Other people's vessels. Elisha told the woman, go borrow vessels. Emmanuel, I want you to stand up and yeah. sit on the chair behind you. What? No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Emmanuel, sit on the chair behind you. Yeah. Oh, oh so you can sit there. Sit there. He's just promoting you. I'm promoting you. Yeah, I'm promoting you. Promoting. 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 That's it, because he's tall, you can't see through his hair, yeah. right? That's why. Now you can see better. Yes. Uh -huh. It's okay like that. Oh, come and sit here, the first chair. Now, let's go back to the Bible verse we read. 
Elisha told the woman, go and borrow vessels. Yes. Go and borrow vessels means go and borrow from other people. So that when you come, you can transfer your oil into other people's vessels. What does this one mean? You need to borrow vessels. These are ideas, methods, systems in order to expand your ability, your talent and ideas. Any leader who does not read cannot be a good leader. By the way, what is the difference between read and lead? Read and lead. Uh -huh. I think, um, hmm. I think okay, spell lead. Lead. L -E -A -D. Spell read. R -E -A -D. What are the difference between read and lead? L -E -A -D. That's it. So to be able to maximize your potentials, you must love reading. I read a lot. This year, I've pushed my heart to finish one book every month. Why? If I read, I borrow the writer's idea into mine. One time I don't like when somebody asks me a question, I say, I don't know. Why don't I know? I, mean, I look like a fool. Say, you know, um, let me get back to you. If I don't know that, let me get back to you. Okay, ciao, ciao. I have to go and find the answer. Last time you said this, yeah, this, this is it. If I say I don't know, then I'm like you. I don't know when I be like you. You see what I'm saying? So if you want to reach the highest of your potential, start reading. Reading. And not cheap Bibles and not cheap books. Read English books. Novels. <laughs> you are so next week. I want to see Emanuela. Next week I want to see a new English Bible. I'll buy you know, I'll buy one for you. How much is your phone? Oh, oh don't worry. Do you want a phone or you want a Bible? Which one do you want me to buy for you? <laughs> Okay, others, others vessels expand your capacity. Like I was giving an example about a turnout um, basketball association. It is limited to only turnout and um, the village there, Vosla. But I'll look at, I'll look at how Christian is playing basketball, and I'm going to give Christian my idea. Or you can be said, please, do you know a place where I can? Function properly, I'm going to give him my vessel, my idea. My idea is that don't just quit from that place, but go and visit, turn out, uh, sorry, Hoekstraat um, Basketball Association. Oh, hold on, I'm coming. Why? Because because Hoekstraat is very close to the Holland border, they always have money with the Holland people. So I am transferring from local to international. So when you read other people's books, you are borrowing their ideas and their methods. Amen. See that? So if you want to be a leader, be a reader. Amen. Amen. Again, when you borrow from other people, it modifies what you have. Mm. And my dear one, but yeah, fine. I know you like sing, uh, watching Sinak on, on, on the YouTube. Yeah. The way Sinak sings and praises, <laughs> and you feel like, I want to do the same. And then you'll be singing, you remember what you watch on the on Senat, and then you begin to do <laughs> by the time you realize you are being punished like this. Is that not it? Okay. Now, Christian, which NBA player do you know? The best one is LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. Yeah. You see the way he does his things. He put the ball and shoot behind it like that. Uh -huh. You are borrowing that guy's vessel. And that was going to polish what you already have. She says, see, what? <laughs> maybe yours is cooking. Yeah. <laughs> and then you like watching cooking programs. Yeah. Yeah. You see how the chef makes the tomato with this. Wow. Mm. You see? I'm here. You are borrowing the cooker's ideas from the TV. You add it to yours. Yes. It's come to modify what you have. So one of the other proposed vessels means you are going to modify or change what you have by shaping it to another level. Amen. 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 Another thing this story tells me is that in case this woman, 
they don't have good relationship with their neighbors. How would he go and borrow verses from them? Yes. Nobody will mind her. You go and ring her for 34, you, what do you want on my doorstep? Flick it up, man. But because he had a good connection with the people, or friendly in touch with the people, they all were, they all were ready to lend her their verses. So this brings a lesson that you should be one with each other. So that when I need something, I can come to you, and when you need something, you can come to me. Amen. Amen. Now, other two verses are other ideas. It increases the value of your talent. You can borrow other people's verses, but not their oil. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can borrow the way I do my thing. You can borrow the way I do my thing, but you can borrow me. Yes? I have to sit down for days to put this one down, one by one, one by one. That is my system of doing. You can borrow it. But the way they coming from me, yeah, but you cannot. No. That's how it is. That's true. Uh, how do you borrow vessels who make you creative persons? How do you borrow them? Somebody is TV, I don't. 24 hours, TV, the same channel. The same channel. I don't. The same channel. <laughs> Even the money is going to eat. He posts it. Come and continue from there. No. I see you are like that. Eh? <laughs> so, borrow vessels that will make you creative. And again, where do you get these vessels? You can get them from books, as I just said. Books contain others' idea and knowledge. Songs, advice, and encouragement. Don't go and listen to songs of this guy, uh, Chatawale, and this guy, Kofi Kanata. They are saying things that just, it doesn't contain anything. There are the veggies, I know. When I heard, I said, hey, God should come and take control of your steering because you are drunk. Jesus, take the wheel. Huh? Okay. Uh, look, you're saying. <laughs> Jesus Jesus thing thing because what you are drunk. No, no, no. Uh, that's another version of yeah. our own. Yeah. I don't know the lyrics, but somebody being drunk, asking God to take over. What can you learn from this kind of songs? Yeah. Listen to songs that are inspirational. Songs that teaches. Yeah. Be biblical because you are a Christian. You don't do the thing that well you do. Yes. Are you here? Yes, sir. Are you here? Uh -huh. Poems contains uh, motivations. Sometimes your spirit are down. I send messages. The moment so I say, oh, the way you send a message, where do you get them from? Sometimes I'm down, but the moment I read from you, I say, okay. You see, it's coming to ginger you up. But you must also watch out for what you borrow from others. Sometimes profane songs they can corrupt your spirit. That's a preach. Yeah. Talking about our dog, we share and those kind of things, it's <coughs> what you need. Yeah, it will corrupt your mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not like, what did you say? You are uh, heard you. Uh -huh. Okay, tell me that. Uh -huh. You see? So, borrow the correct ideas, teachings, seminars, like what I'm doing. I'm teaching you how to maximize your potentials. If I teach you things that will not help you, don't listen to me. But I thank God he always gives me what will build you up. Yes, sir, go to seminars. Yes, invest extra money. I invest money and time to go to other places and I learn. Yes. And I add it to what I have. So when you call me, I'll never say no. Because I have something to give. So from today, we're going to maximize our potential. But somebody will say, but is it good to borrow? Is it good to borrow? Yes. Really? <coughs> Somebody say always. Not always. Not always. You borrow, you invest, yeah. and you get it back. Get Anytime you go to Sandra, please you have tomatoes. Please you have onions. <laughs> Can I get some garlic? Can I have some that, oil? That one Can I become a habitual? Uh -huh. You borrow just to just to eat. When the feeding is finished, you are done. No. Borrow what can invest in your life. And tomorrow you don't go there. And you don't go there again. When Jesus Christ came, he also borrowed. Yes, Jesus also borrowed. Yeah, he does. Let me give you an example. He borrowed Peter's boat in order to stand and preach the gospel at the lake. Because people were gathered at the shore. 
and the shore is always sloping like that. So you cannot stand there and the bottom and speak to the people up there. So you have to borrow Peter's boat, stand in it, and he preached. So he used the boat to maximize his potentials. Again, when he was coming to the entrance of Jerusalem, Palm Sunday, the donkey he rode on, it was not his donkey, it was someone's donkey that he used. He borrowed it there. And lastly, the last supper, he told them, it's about the Passover. We are going to celebrate it. The upper room where they went to eat the Passover, it was not his, not his father's, he borrowed it. So that means you can borrow somebody's uh, uh, vessel to, in order to uh, maximize your potential. Now to end everything, I want to say end by saying, the best help you can get is this. Number one, to receive God's creative word. That's right. When God's word comes to you, don't neglect it. Hold it and act on it. Point number two, apply your given talent, your ideas, your abilities, and your gifts. By his grace, I'm gifted in teaching. So when I get the word, I have to break it down to a teaching standard so that I can teach people. Amen. Amen. Number three, allow other people's ideas to shape your own abilities. When you read books, when you listen to other people, the one they give it to you, add it to yours. If yours is not all the way to polish it up and then use it. Mm. When you graduate from school, the same thing you gotta do. You gotta do that's why we do stage. You can have your stage class, you do the practice of the stage class, you learn things from the stage class that were not even in your books. Mm. Right? Yes. Hey, so what are you doing? You're gonna add what you have borrowed to what you have, and that one will shoot you further ahead in life. That's true. My last point is. This can help you help yourself and solve what? Your and solve what? Your problem. And solve what? Your problem. So when the woman borrowed the vessels and she poured it into it, she later went to Elisha and said, I have done what you told me. But this is something I want you to see here. Water and oil, which one flows faster? Water. Water. And the jar of oil, nobody knows the content. So imagine she borrowed a huge vessel like this from the Petra. And she borrowed this one from Comfort. The Bible says she began to pour. She is pouring. She is pouring. Look at the position of me. Mm. I am pouring. How long will this water take me to fill this big thing? Seconds. Seconds? No. Maybe an hour. Hey. Maybe you two. You got oil goes slow down water. Ah, I thought you were water. Yes. And this is very big. Ten times or fifty times this size. So you can see how long. How long? How long? She is sweating, but she's holding on. You pull it aside. Must I bring another one? She pours into it. More. 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 It's full. Bring another one. They fill and fill until all the places were finished up. The lesson here is that perseverance. Mm. The woman had to hold on that position for mm. a long time. Oh, Even though your potential might seem small, mm. it doesn't work the way you want it, mm. but perseverance. perseverance. Mm. Next one, I'm going to teach you perseverance, perseverance and patience. Mm. And then you may task well. mm. The woman was persevering mm. to make sure that the oil does not cease. And I can imagine her room was filled with so many things. Some of them were cylindrical, some boxes didn't were, 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 were square like this, others were rectangular. But no matter what the shape was, she filled up every one of them. Rainbows, parabola, parabola, <laughs> circles. So you can imagine the pain she was going through. And the sun will bring another one. So to end it, begin to pray to God, say, God, help me locate my potential. For the woman, she knew where the oil was. No matter how small it was, it was significant to her. What about if she did not know that she had it? When I was coming from Ghana, I didn't have CDs on me. So I couldn't even give money to my son who came to see me off at the airport. When I came, I, didn't, I had my co somewhere. Weeks, weeks, weeks later, I found 500 Ghana CDs inside it. 
I didn't know I have it. That's it. You might have something, but you don't even know you have it. And in case that time I needed to solve a big problem, I would have got into a deeper mess. So the best thing is to pray to your God. Say, so God, let me know what my potentials are. Amen. Then I can maximize it. Amen. The woman had nothing. But, say but. 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 but, but, but. Why were saying but we get this turn up? But, 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 Thank him for the message you have received. Thank him. Somebody thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, somebody thank God. 